In today's readings, we heard about angels, tribulations, and spiritual implications regarding end times. And St. Michael the Archangel was mentioned in the first reading. And I'd like to talk uh, about angels and about St. Michael, especially in days of tribulation within the church herself, when, when bishops are asking us to pray to St. Michael. God is good, and God is only good, which means God can only create what is good. And he has created everything that exists. Angels, human beings, animals, plants, minerals, all are good. Angels are like us in the fact that they have an intellect and they have a free will, but they're unlike us because they don't have bodies. They are pure spirits. And to communicate then, they don't use their lungs and vocal cords and tongues and lips to create sound waves and eardrums, you know, to catch the sound waves, to be able to communicate. They share their thoughts directly like mental telepathy. Hmm. And there it is. You got it all. While the lowest angel on the lowest choir is vastly more intelligent than the smartest human being who has ever existed, they are not infinite like God. Angels, these spirits, have limits. St. Thomas Aquinas is also called the angelic doctor because he taught a lot about angels based on scripture passages. And he teaches that each angel is its own species. Imagine if you were the only human being in this church and everyone else was his or her own species. And yet, we can communicate and we can work together. That's the way it is among these spirits. No species of angelic being goes extinct because they're eternal, and no angel propagates, so there are no extra of that species. And because they have jobs that they do, and there are nine jobs based on scripture passages, we group them together and we call them poetically nine choirs of angels. Seraphim, cherubim, and thrones are closest to God. Dominions, principalities, powers, and virtues govern the cosmos. And archangels and angels at the bottom rung, including our guardian angels, are closest to serving us more directly. At Mass, before we sing the Holy Holy, um, we ask that God would allow our voices to blend in with the choirs of angels. Sometimes we just say, with all the angels and saints. But there are times when we actually number some of these choirs, which we shall do today. All spirits of the nine choirs were created good. All were created with free will. And all were asked to serve God and his holy will. Some early church fathers reflecting on scripture believed that God shared the basics of his plan, which was to help the humble, earthbound, flesh-covered spirits, Adam and Eve, to help them to reach heaven. The greatest were asked to serve the least of God's free will creatures. All spirits of the nine choirs were asked, asked, will you serve? And this seemed like an outrageous invitation, Uh, like asking somebody with a doctorate in biology to watch and care for a kid's ant farm. Like, this is beneath me. And when it comes to Lucifer, whose name means bearer of light, he, uh, in the Book of Wisdom, is listed as a cherub, the second highest choir. And he's more like God than the other seven rungs of choirs beneath him. Very other, few other creatures are more like God 
than Lucifer. And the early church fathers believed that in his pride, he believed he was created and destined for a greater task than to help Adam and Eve and all us human beings. Then the war began. Because Lucifer said, Non servia, I will not serve. And he kind of makes sense. It does seem illogical to ask the guy with a doctorate in biology to take care of ants. And then in this war, there are no swords and shields because they don't have bodies. It's just a war of words trying to persuade people. And all these other seven choirs of angels are like, man, he's, he's making sense. And he's way smarter than any of us. And then came Michael, who in the midst of the chaos, are we going to serve or not, shouted out his name, Mikael, which means, who is like God? In other words, Lucifer is impressive. Now, Michael is the second lowest of the choirs of angels, speaking of a cherub, the second highest. And he's like, yeah, he's incredible. He's, but who's like God? Lucifer might be more vastly intelligent than us, but he still has limits. God has no limits. We have to believe in God. We must trust. And Lucifer carried the day. God used the weak to shame the strong. In the book of Revelations, chapter 12, it tells us more details about this red dragon with seven heads and ten horns that sweep a third of the stars from the sky. And the early church fathers, many of them believed that a third of the angels were also hurled to the earth and that humanity would continue, time would go on, until heaven was repopulated to fill those stars that had fallen. This dragon is called Satan, meaning adversary, devil, meaning attacker. And now in sheer bitterness and hatred, Lucifer and the fallen ones, the demons, try to destroy us rather than serve us, getting us to hate one another to be jealous, greedy, selfish, to insist that we are in the right and someone else needs to apologize first. Nothing was created evil, but those created with free will had the option to reject what is good, including God himself. These fallen angels had the necessary knowledge they needed to make their single choice without ever needing more information to change their minds. This spiritual warfare continues. And demons could do incredible damage, but God protects us because he wants us to use our free will so we can exercise our freedom. Yet these evil spirits do try to influence our actions. They can't read our minds, but they're so vastly intelligent just like sometimes we can look at each other and say, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this homily is going way too long. I figure that one out. They cannot take possession. Our souls are like homes that have windows and doors. But on the doors, there's only a doorknob on the inside. And we would have to open the door to let them in. And we can let them in indirectly through mortal sin, but also directly through things like Ouija boards, communicating with the dead, tarot cards, palm reading, horoscopes, black magic, and evil magic, to say nothing of satanic rituals. None of these practices, including horoscopes, will ever invoke the name of Jesus Christ or advise us to trust in God or encourage us to read more scripture. Whatever power they have, it is, the, it is achieved through evil spirits. In this world comes Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. And we must battle with the strength of Jesus. We have been given power over these evil spirits. Listen to these two verses in Luke chapter 10. The 72 disciples returned rejoicing and said to Jesus, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. 
And Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Jesus gives us his power through sacraments and prayer, especially when we pray like the rosary or with scripture. And he's also given us the help of angels. Today's readings remind us that there is a spiritual battle that requires our awareness and it requires Christ's power for our own personal growth and also for church reform. Whenever we're tempted to create our own path or our own religion, or we're overwhelmed by the tide of evil or personal struggles, let us remember what Michael told us. Who is like God? No one is like God. So let us trust in God's plan, his wisdom, his command to love, his power, and his love.